I'm not really sure where to start with the match reaction for this one. Chelsea won all with Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. Are you happy with that draw? Are you happy with the performance? There's so many different talking points from that game. Let's get straight into it. Uh, I would not have expected Manchester United to go there today and put in any sort of decent performance, really, against Chelsea. I expected Chelsea to comfortably win that game. They're one of the informed teams, pumped Juve 4-0 during the week. You just, I didn't have that much hope. And United, okay. Look, we, we saw elements there today of the Ralph Ragnick style. I think he had some sort of influence on us. I'm not saying that he chose to start 11 and then said, Carrick, this is what you got to do. But I think he must have had a conversation with Carrick because there were elements inside that team there today in our pressing system that we just don't really, have not really done before. Fred, he, why, he, he, was he man of the match? Tomine was given man of the match. Who was your man of the match? Uh, overall, if you're looking at that performance, the first 45 minutes, Manchester United came out there to not concede against Chelsea. And, you know, we were defensively sound as a unit. We pressed well. We didn't press too high up the pitch. You know, for a little bit we did. Uh, but you saw it towards the end when Sancho and Rashford both went off. The sub sort of killed Manchester United's momentum, didn't it? Uh, it was when they went off then, and Lingard came on and Ronaldo came on. The tempo changed. Chelsea were a bit more comfortable. <laughs> it's a shame, really. And I think that comes down to fitness. But... For me, that pressing system there, we know that the press is going to come into Manchester United. We also know that we're, uh, we're not very good at it you know, overall. We can't do it for a full 90 minutes. That's down to fitness and down to organisation. But Jaden Sancho today, baby. We've got to talk about Jaden Sancho. His decision there, Bruno just lobbing it long. And the only reason that Jorginho made the mistake was because we were pressing with intensity. Rashford and Sancho running straight at him. Sancho nicks the ball, goes through, could have squared it to Rashford, who seemed offside like 90% of the time. Maybe he was just behind him. I don't know. But he decided to take it on his own. And that is a sign of confidence. Two goals in his last two games this week. Well done, Jaden Sancho. He's really starting to get a bit of confidence in a Manchester United shirt. And the fact that he took that on and slotted it away was great. But yeah, it, this game here was the, both goals, Manchester United's goal and Chelsea's goal, came off the back of individual errors. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, it was a foolish, foolish, reckless, I don't know how to describe it, but he should be better than that. It's a really daft penalty to concede. I think that's the fairest way I could describe that. Uh, and Jorginho made no mistake. David Gea couldn't save, his, save that penalty. Um, angry. Angry is the wrong word. Frustrated, I suppose, because United... I mean, Fred, what were you doing when you decided to just chip it back into Mendy's chest? Oh, my God. Jesus. But you know, the other thing, very, there was three sort of distinct periods of that game. The first 45 minutes where it was all Chelsea, United were in a good defensive shape, but we had no threat going forward whatsoever, did we? Limp from United going forward. I think that, that goes to show that the organisation is there, but then the players don't really know what to do inside that system. I can't wait to see what Rangnick does and his system that he brings in. And the characteristics of it were there today, far more. Was that just down to Michael Carrick's decisions? Or was that slightly influenced by Ragnik? I'm going to go for the, the, the latter. But again, it's presumptive and we're assuming. We don't know, but you can, you can just guess. Um, and I'm, yeah, it was that first 45 minutes where it was totally all Chelsea. And then in the, the first 50, 10, 15 minutes of that second half, where United came out, was so much more aggressive. Rashford had Chelsea on toast. They didn't really know what to do with him. We were playing with a sort of slightly split strikers. And Sancho and Rashford were the ones chasing down and then when Rashford and Sancho went off the game switched again and it went back towards Chelsea and then from that point on it felt like Chelsea were going to get a winner the last 10 to 15 minutes of that game it just the momentum was going in that direction and it felt more and more likely and that the Rudiger at the end with the, with the opportunity but United held on and United held firm and if you're looking at the two results that we had this week and the two performances after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked the 2-0 win over Villarreal to top the Champions League group. And now one all away at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. They're two, in my opinion, great results for Michael Carrick. Who I think has, you know, I, I, I don't know. I've been quite impressed with certain aspects of Manchester United in these last two games. Under Carrick, fair play. As I said, United were organised today. Um, what we want to see is have that sort of organisation whilst at the same time having the threat going forward. But Bruno Fernandes, man, we've, I think we've got to have a little conversation about Bruno Fernandes. Uh, he's the king of the chaotic press. And that performance today there from Bruno was utterly chaotic. 
from uh, from the passing. The, the passing was so sloppy from Manchester United. It was just really silly, stupid mistakes. So many of them. Um, as I said, more structure inside that uh, that pressing system that we tried to implement today. But just the sloppiness. And Bruno was nobody was more sloppy than Bruno. As I said, he, he's somebody. Every player you can criticise when they're playing poorly and praise when they're doing well. And today I'm not going to. Uh, it's it's not to throw Bruno under the bus or anything like that, but it, it kind of stood out how poor Bruno Fernandez was today. He just yeah, sloppy in pretty much everything that he was doing. Very very strange. Inside that system there, we played with the false nine. Bruno was the false nine. And then when Rashford went off and then it sort of changed and chopped. Yeah, I don't know. Really? <laughs> I don't, as I said, it was, it was quite a confusing game, if I'm being completely honest, because of the, the way that United played in that first 45. It, it probably pissed a lot of people off, but it was defensively sound and, and structured. And I understood it. Carrie did the same thing against Villarreal, really. 60 minutes, we were not really in that game. And then... Bruno and Rashford came on against Villarreal and then it, it, we flipped it completely. And today we flipped it again. First 45 minutes, we came in, we sort of kept it defensively sound. That was the priority for that first half, to go in probably at nil-nil. That was the perfect first half, I think, for what Carrick wanted. And then to come out in that second and really go aggressive straight away. It's clear that the, the instructions were there and the players followed it. And as I said, the only reason that Jorginho made that mistake was because he had Sancho and Rashford bearing down on him. They forced that mistake and we capitalised on the opportunity. And the fact, as I said, the fact that we were a, a daft decision by Wan-Bissaka away from winning 1-0 there at Stamford Bridge, given the week that we've had, given the turmoil that has been at the club and the form that Chelsea are in, I think that's a fantastic result. I really do. I really do. Um, maybe I'm going overboard there and a draw really isn't going to change much, but in the grand scheme of things, in the context of this week, with the interim manager and the Ragnik announcement that's coming this week, Carrick had these two games to sort of show his worth. I don't know whether Carrick's going to stay on at Manchester United. I don't know whether Darren Fletcher's going to stay on, Kieran McKenna or Mike Phelan. What we're hearing is it's going to be a bit of a blend between coaches that Ragnik brings in and also some of the coaching staff that might stay. Do you think that Carrick will stay or do you think Carrick should stay? You let me know what you think in the comments below. But as I said, I'm taking a 2 all sorry, a 2 all a 2 nil win over Villarreal, and that one all draw there against Chelsea is two decent results in what was a very tumultuous week for Manchester United as a football club. For me, that's probably Carrick's last game as our manager in his, in his two games. Eh? Carrick has dropped Bruno Fernandes and dropped Cristiano Ronaldo. What do you think of the decision to drop Ronaldo? I think it was vindicated. Vindicated is a... Yeah, well, he, when he came on, it was 1-0. United were, as I said, I don't think Sancho and Rashford would have gone off if they weren't, you know, they were flagging because of the system we were playing. They were pressing with real intensity. It wasn't like the, it wasn't as high a press as Ragnik has used or does use. And this is something I said in my video, taking a look at the sort of what formation could Ragnik have. I said, look, we don't know. We might see Manchester United operate more of a mid-press rather than a high-press. So the pressing comes inside the midfield. And we stacked the midfield today. We had Matic there. We had Matomene there. And we had Fred there. We had loads of bodies there. Fred out of possession today. I thought it was fantastic. I said it. I think he'll thrive under this Ragnik system. And I think he will. I, yeah, I think Matomene will probably do well as well. Matic was there to sort of protect and screen the defence. And I think he did his job okay. Lindelof and Bai. Uh, and Wan-Bissaka in the first half were literally terrifying me. Uh, but overall, I think they played pretty well. And given that we had a back four there today where three of them aren't our starters, and as I said, we were a daft penalty away from a clean sheet. The structure and the organisation was there today. The attack and the qualities weren't overall. But we took the opportunity. We went there with that counter-attacking system, the counter-attacking uh, style, and it worked. And we got that goal. But a reckless decision from wan -Bissaka. Was it reckless? Was it foolish? Either way, it was daft. That was the reason why Chelsea got back in the game. Now, what's your overall reaction? Are you happy with that? What, what do you think we can take forward going into the Ralph Ragnick era, which should be getting started against Arsenal on Thursday? It's a hell of a week coming up for Manchester United. And after the week, remember where we, where we were after Watford last weekend, to Solskjaer being sacked on Sunday, to Villarreal away a few days later and winning 2-0. And then doing that at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea, probably the informed team in the Premier League. I'm taking positives from those two results. A win and a draw, decent, I would say. 
Now, what's your match reaction? What's your comments? Are you frustrated with how United set up? What are your concerns about the Ragnik system that's coming in? We saw, as I said, hallmarks of it there today in terms of the pressing system because we didn't, we don't really, <laughs> we haven't really played too often like that under Solskjaer or Carrick. So what's your reaction? You let me know in the comments below. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But one all at Stamford Bridge. You let me know what you think. Ooh.